keeping very well. Tonight we uh, revision. Yes, 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 revision. Right. Um, we have an ATC event coming up soon. A Vatsim event, just for our lovely community. Uh, we're going to be doing a fly in to Shannon, right? And we're going to pick a couple of different departure airports. How this is all going to work for the event, ladies and gentlemen? And you see, um, pilots will register for the event. Hey, I'm interested. We'll pick a date, possibly something on a weekend, and uh. All the names will be entered who register and then we'll go back to each pilot and say okay this is your departure airfield this is your departure time or your slot time and that's how it's going to work right and the whole plan here is we will all fly from multiple locations in ireland to shannon right it's gonna be fun this one and uh, well we'll see for the advanced people who already do that sim uh well we might do a cross country uh or an international flight if you guys want to do something uh maybe tip across from england or wales or Scotland even, and just tip across that way, right? Those from the US, uh, uh, a, well, <laughs> right? You'll be a while getting across uh, in general aviation or indeed with VF4. But uh, it'd, it'd be grand, it'd be grand. So um, over the last 11 weeks, would you believe it? 11 weeks uh, since we started this course. Uh, well, we've covered a fair bit of ground, but fear not. If tonight is the first time you want to start learning, well, now is the time to jump on board because, well, we're going to go through all the revision, all the different things we've learned so far. Plus, we're going to be checking out, obviously, the new airports and having a look at some charts just to get ourselves familiar uh, with each airport. Because of the airports we've chosen, we have Donegal, Waterford, Weston uh, and Burr. Now, we've flown out of Burr a couple of times, which is grand. We know the crack in Burr. Look out for the flying balloon, a weather balloon. Um, but in Waterford little bit different. Weston, very different because you're very, very close, uh, of course, to Dublin, right? Uh, and then, uh, well, Donegal, that's another kind of kettle of fish. So we're going to have a look tonight at these different airports, some of the charts associated to them. And what we're going to do now, from from now until the event, it's preparing and practicing for doing this event. So even if you missed out every other lesson up until this point, well, stay tuned because what you're going to get over the next few weeks is enough to do this flight on VATSIM and, you know, put a big tick beside your first VATSIM event, perhaps, or your first VATSIM flight, right? We have what's called the ATC Ground School document. This one, right? Version 6. And, uh, well, I did see a notification over on Discord earlier on. I may have uh, the SIM and sound settings. It might need a tweak. But sure, listen, I put this together. So, like, it's, you know what I mean? It's going to be broken, you know? Uh, but anyway, this document, it's made up of a lot of online resources uh, that are already published. And um, I, I kind of scoured the internet to find them. A number of different VATSIM kind of clubs. Also VATSIM directly. And uh, with some of my own real world uh, documents that I got my hands on. Uh, and I've put it all in here. It covers a lot, but it's designed that it's a reference. You can kind of jump back into it and say, what was the story with the phonetic alphabet? Or, you know, how do you read a METAR or an ATIS? And all this sort of jazz. And the idea being, of course, you can click on the gadget and it brings you to that page. And uh, that's kind of how it works, right? That's how it works. So we'll be having a quick look down through this document and um, making sure that, uh, well, you know, we're able to connect to that sim. Uh, we have our audio systems up and running. The sim settings, uh, we have that somewhat optimized. So uh, we can expect to have a decent flight when we're on that sim, right? That's always a, a challenge, right? And uh, well, there's other, another few bits and bobs there's no teal in this document. Oh, Jesus. Cyrus, I'll fix that. Oh, wait. Is there no teal at all? Oh, there's a bit of teal. Look, a little bit. I'll fix that, right? I'll fix that. So, whether you're a seasoned pilot or indeed a newcomer to the skies, this stream and, well, the next couple of streams, well, it's for you because this is what we're going to be practicing. We'll be revi uh, revisiting all the important lessons and techniques, ensuring that everyone is well prepared for our first community VATSIM event, right? The topics we're going to cover, well, we're going to go through flight planning. Learn the art of crafting precise flight plans, taking into, content, uh, into account factors like waypoints, VRPs, airspace, and also fuel calculations. That's important, right? Uh, we're also going to be looking at charts and procedures, familiarizing ourselves with the essential charts, the procedures, and the, uh, you know, what NOTAMs, even figuring out what they are for the relevant airports, right? We'll also check out the weather. How do we interpret meteorological data and understanding METAR and ATIS? and helping us to make, you know, informed decisions when we want to plan our flight. We're also going to be having a look at the uh, process of preparing ourselves with filing a flight on the VATSIM network. How does that happen? How do we fill out a flight plan? How do we get it up on VATSIM? And how do we make sure everything is tickety-boo and ready to go? We'll go to that as well. 
Um, and yeah, look, it's a, it's just a lot of revision, right? A lot of kind of ground to cover. But it's the idea behind this, um, as we said from the start, it's to take people from the absolute entry level uh, with online flying and make sure then by the end of it that you're, you know, confident, competent and comfortable being able to do an online flight with VATSIM. And it doesn't have to be very difficult. In actual fact, it's a relatively straightforward flight. And our focus is on VFR, visual flight rules, but because 90% or more of the traffic on VATSIM tends to be the IFR stuff, a lot of the airliner guys. And there's a whole, and it's no pun intended, but there is a whole world to kind of explore and discover when it comes to VFR flying. Some of the stuff is amazing, right? So that's what we're going to do. So I'm on the ground here at Waterford Airport, right? Waterford Airport. And uh, well, I do have some charts and stuff over here. And uh, well, I'll post this into the chat as we're streaming. So you guys can follow along to see what it is that we're actually doing, right? So hang on, I'll post this in here now. So you can click on that link. It'll bring it to the Irish Aviation Authority's website. And there's one in particular. We want the AIP for Waterford, right? We're going to have a look at this uh, control zone. That's essentially what we're looking for. And uh, how do we interpret all of this? Because this is a new airport for us. We haven't flown out of here yet, right? And uh, well, this is going to be one of the starting points that will be selected for our VATSIM event. Right. Do you know? It's all kind of go, isn't it? <sighs> How do we get out of this mess? Uh, distractions? Use a distraction. Uh, right. So in the contents of the book, which is in the book, in the contents, you'll notice that I have some lessons highlighted. These are the lessons that we all work together live on the stream, right? But you can go back into these lessons and click in and say, right, okay, well, how does one... Oh, there's a link that doesn't work. Look, uh, here it is here. How do we do this lesson? And it explains to you what we're going to do step by step and what the pilot says, what ATC will say. And, you know, we can have a bit of a mess and a laugh with this, right? Do you know what I didn't do, lads? I didn't turn on me fancy voice thingy. Hang on. Give it a second. Give it a second. Uh, now, let's see. It's, it's loading the science. Loading the science. Uh, I'm still trying to work that one out. Listen, you did. I wonder if you dream, if it's dreams or nightmares. I'd say dreams. I would say dreams. I would say dreams. Uh, new audio device detected. No uh, feeding the chipmunks. What? Right, okay. So she's loading up, lad. She's loading up. Right, right, right. Let's see what happens here now. So if I press this button right now. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, if I press this button. No, no, no. Why not working? Why not working? Hang on, lads. We're at the breaking it. This is a great start in the stream, isn't it? Why aren't you working? Wait for it. Voice mod needs to be running. It is running. I've just started it. Stupid machine. Let's start it up again. Uh oh. Voice mod disconnect. Uh oh. She's, she's giving out to us, lads. Give it a second now. We'll get this working. It'll be totally worth it. Maybe it's maybe. Oh, wait. That wasn't it. Maybe I'm worth it. Wait. What was that one of? Something to do with shampoo, anyway, wasn't it? Uh, no, don't switch the device, please. Just play the yeah, with the thing with the yoke, and then we'll get in together. Right, here we go. I think we're going to work now, right? Give it a second now to warm up. Um, anyway, so what this does, we check our radio. So this is all getting a radio check. This is the first time you know. The very first thing you should do when you're on VATSIM, just do a radio check. The idea is to eliminate mic fright. You might be a little bit anxious or a little bit nervous, about speaking live on with ATC. I mean, you're literally speaking to another person, right? Hello, Grand Control? Did that work, lads? Did I sound all fancy just now, did I? Um, but the idea being is you can kind of get rid of that mic fright just by doing something as simple as a radio check. And we go through here in the book how a radio check would sound like, right? So you start off by saying the facility name. In this case, it was Shannon Ground, followed by our call sign. And we get to choose our own call sign. And we, you know, we had to read up true call signs. They're, they're mentioned up above. So how this would work is a simple, a simple radio check, right? We would say, uh, Shannon Ground, Echo India, Tango Tango Mike. Um, now we could go further into this. For this lesson, we just start off with saying, Shannon Ground, Echo India, Tango Tango Mike. Now what we could do, we can get, we can make it, we can condense it later. After you learn how to do it, you condense it down even further. But for this particular lesson, they're not going to give out to you. So Echo, or Shannon Ground, Echo India, Tango Tango Mike. Echo India, Tango Tango Mike, Shannon Ground, pass your message. Now, in some cases, they might turn around and say, they're going to give you the airport or the runway, the active runway. They're going to give you the local Q&H. But for this lesson, we're just looking for a radio check. All right. Now, what you could do, the advanced here is, we could do this, for example. Shannon Ground, Echo India, Tango Tango Mike, radio check, one to one decimal eight. 
I might have pressed the wrong button when I said that. I'll try that again. Shannon Ground. Echo India Tango Tango Mike. Radio check on 121.8. Shannon Ground will then come back. Echo India Tango Tango Mike. Shannon Ground. Readability 5. Okay, readability 5 also, right? So you get the idea, right? You get the idea. Um, uncertainty in communication. This is one of the most important things we're going to learn, and we have to learn, right? If you aren't sure if ATC is calling you on frequency, or maybe someone else has a similar call sign to us, the recommended practice is to stay silent for about 10 seconds. This gives the ATC the chance to call you again, and do not respond to transmissions if you are not 100% sure they're for you. Right? So if you're unsure, just wait. Right? Also, never speak when someone else is speaking. The controller will hear both transmissions at the same time and, well, he won't be able to understand a single one. Right? So if the controller is saying something to you, someone else is speaking, or you don't understand what they're saying, or they're speaking too fast, whatever, it doesn't matter. All you need to say in a calm voice would be, Shannon Tower, Echo India, Tango Tango Mike, or whatever facility and call sign you're you're using, and you literally just say, say again. Say again. Simple as, or say again slowly, right? Say again slowly. So they'll know then to kind of calm it all down. Keen Lafford is here, good to see you. Inverse Galaxy, good to see you. Uh, David Bay, good to see you. Welcome in, lads. You are looking mighty. So that was the initial call up. That was to break the mic fright. That was just to get you involved with actually using your voice, transmitting it, and then speaking uh, to us either here on Discord or eventually over on Vatsim. Right now, I don't believe I I, I do there. believe that there is no Vatsim uh, up and running at the moment in Dublin. Uh, we can try it. I don't think there is though. So we'll open this up now. Uh, look, all thank you for the follow. Welcome in, guys. If I've missed anyone there with a follow, just shout, just shout. Uh, so let's see if this works now. So it's gonna connect. Let's see here now. So if I connect as an observer, please. Uh, yes. And we are at PA28. PA28. And we are Echo India Tango Tango Mike. And connect as an observer. You've entered an unknown. Jesus. I've entered an unknown aircraft type. Surely you know what a PA28 is. Hang on now. Hang on now. PA-28. That'll do. Not connected. Host connection failed. Connecting to V pilot host. Host connection failed. What's happening here, lads? Connect. Connect. Ooh, what's a break now? Uh, think about it now. I'm in. Uh, I'm in and out because work. Glad to be here though. Ah, Scruffy, good to see you. Why isn't that connecting? Connect observer. Not connected. Host connection failed. That's a new one, lads. That's a new one. Right, close that. I'll try it again. So I, mean, I use this in host mode. Essentially, my uh, gaming PC. If you want to call it that, that handles all the chattage. You see, uh, connect connection failed. Ooh, it's do you know what it's after doing here, lads? It's after changing. Uh, it's after changing the friggin' IP. Well, the curse of the seven somethings, right? How do we do this now? Uh, network, right? Automatic, yes. Performance, yes. Host. Okay, that's okay. The host is the same. Yes. Jesus, lads, we're to break it. Okay, try that again, Murph. So what happens is, if your IP changes, yeah, the sim is running. If your IP changes, you could be shagged. So it's trying to connect on one dash eighteen. My hand, don't panic. If I just do a uh, command look, and uh, we'll bring this over here. If I do, what's that code? Is it IP config? IP config. Yes, IP config. What is this PC? Ethernet. Ah. Uh, let's see here now. Why did it change? It's after literally changing one digit look. Literally changed one digit. So I now need to go into this, host, and go 17. Why did it change it? Apply. Uh, connect it to the host. Very strange. Right, now we connect. And connect. So, uh, mode C is turned off. We are connected to Vatsim now. And I don't have any, yeah, there's no ATC close to me, right? Uh, yeah, the IP sometimes changes. Curse of the Seven Sisters, I like that one. Yeah, so there's nothing on Vatsim at the moment, after all that messing. But uh, just, just to make it aware, if you're going to be using vPilot in host mode, for anyone that has two PCs, you know, your flight sim is on one, and your, your communications and whatever is on the other, 
Well, vPilot will allow you to do that. It's a little bit tricky to set it up, but there is like there's tons, tons of uh, tutorials and stuff on how to get it. So you can you can grab it from there, right? So yeah, it's all dynamic. Yeah, lads, I might as well be looking at you know I'm a goat looking at thunder at this stage. You know what I mean? Uh, but anyway, as I said, uncertainty in communication. All we have to say is say again. Well, that gets got, gets us through the mess, you know. So. We then went on and we spoke about charts and why are charts important, right? You guys know what charts are, right? Um, you have IFR and we have VFR, different types of charts, right? The most important ones for VFR, visual flight rules, well, parking, ground movement, traffic circuit, departure and arrival. They're the most important ones we look for when it comes to VFR. Each airport, and this is where we have to do our due diligence when we plan a flight, we got to read the charts. Now, for a lot of people, it might sound a little bit confusing and like, oh, the effort. Once you do it a few times, it's actually fairly easy to pick up uh, what you're looking for on the chart. You can actually start extracting the information fairly quickly, right? So we get into all the different types of charts and what they look like and why we use them. We're going to have a look at these here now in a moment as we look at our charts um, for our uh, flight out of Waterford, right? And then it says, well, how do we use charts, lads? How does one use a chart? Well, I mean, you kind of just follow along. Right, your chart is going to give you some information about the airport, the airspace, altitude restrictions, speed restrictions, visual reference points to say, hey, by the way, if you say, here's a, here's a, here's a published VRP or a visual reference point. Let's say, for example, there's a soccer pitch or a football pitch near the airport, and that's noted on the chart as a VRP. Well, you can then tell the tower or whoever, hey, I'm over by the football pitch. They know where it is because it's actually referenced on the chart, a visual reference point. All right. Anyway, so how we're using the chart, the idea is you need to keep your charts with you. They're important, right? Now, I use uh, Navigraph. I think it's the absolute best thing uh, for flight simulation. Hey, Ian Fisher is here. Good to see you, Ian. Um, Navigraph, for me, is brilliant. There are some other options. You can use LRM and you can upload uh, kind of uh, information into it. Then you can grab some of the freeware charts from the AIP or whatever aviation authority that looks after the area in which you want to fly. Plus, VATSIM has a ton of resources as well. So if you're unsure, if you're trying to find a chart, you can grab them from VATSIM. You can use ChartFox. You can use the uh, AIP. Uh, you can use Navigraph. You can use ForeFlight. You've, you've a lot of options here for charts. All right. Um, then we started talking about ATIS. And we've all heard of an ATIS before. And people back in the day of the early renditions of Microsoft Flight Sim tuned to ATIS. You would have heard it on the original ATC dialog box, right? Which is amazing how old that is. It's actually better than what we have today. It's not hard to credit the ATC back then. It was better. Anyway, the Automated Terminal Information Service, or ATIS, is for the airport. And it's a message to pilots recorded by air traffic controllers. And it's broadcast on a specific radio frequency. The message contains all the essential information about the airport operations that a pilot might need to know. So what might an, uh, an ATIS have? What do we need to know as a pilot at an airport? Some of the most crucial things, lads, we need to know, right? And uh, now crucial, put, kind of put it in terms of priority. What are the most important things we need to know if we're at an airport in relation to ATIS? Automated Terminal Information Service, right? Elevation, yeah. The weather, 100%. You need to know the weather. Elevation is very important, right? The weather is also very important. What else? The weather is going to point us on the right track of telling us what runway we think is active. But an ATIS is going to tell you what runway is active, right? It's also going to give us the barometric pressure. And if there's any important NOTAMs, you know, or, you know, you'll hear it on the ATIS information. They'll turn around and say, um, there's a problem. Not, you know, notice to airmen, as in a NOTAM, taxiway Charlie closed. Or, you know, there's balloons operating in the area. That sort of stuff, right? Active runway, yeah, there you go. It'll also give us the lucky letter of the hour. Indeed it will, Maddie. Indeed it will, right? So you get the idea. The ATIS is critical. We need to know uh, the ATIS for it. Now, what do we do if we're flying and there's no ATC coverage, therefore there's no ATIS information? How do we, or what do we do? How do we figure this one out, lads? Any ideas? So let's say, for example, we're going to be landing at an uncontrolled airport and there is no ATIS. ATIS just not exists. How do we figure out what the weather is doing at said airport? Any ideas? And don't worry if it's right or wrong. Just come up with an idea, right? How does one figure out what it is? It'll also give us the lucky letter. The lucky letter. 
Pull the phone out. Good. VPC weather app. Yes. Meter. Yes, you would look at a meter. Scruffy time. Yes, you can look at the closest airport. You can ask the tower. Yeah. These are all correct answers, by the way. The it's your job. As the pilot in command, it's your job to figure out what's going on there. Yeah. So it could be a simple thing. Um, you know, I was just saying, check the BBC weather app. Check the weather before you fly. What's the forecast going to do? Well, what is the forecast? Well, it's going to be raining later. Okay. What's the wind going to do? No, it's not, it's not going to rain later on. In fact, it's going to clear up. Okay, that's pretty cool. The weather's going to clear up. Right? You can check online. Yep. Look out the window. Keen Nafford, remember our weather stone. If the stone is moving, it's windy. If the stone is missing, it's a tornado. But yeah, you get, you get the idea, right? And depending on how far you're traveling and what the weather is going to be like from one location to the next... You're not necessarily going to have your all your ATIS information because, well, they may not publish it. But again, for s stuff like NOTAMs, um, you're going to get information on the airport. You can actually click onto an airport, f which, you know, the information is freely available in the real world. That you can get NOTAMs for that specific area. Now, in the United States, they, they tend to move a little bit kind of faster in relation to they can get text alerts, right? So they can actually text for ATIS information, they can text for AWOS and ASOS and all these other cool stuff. Uh, and it's a, it's an information service that's done by text rather than having to tune in a frequency for. But you get the idea. Check out the weather. You know, uh, no TAMs, not to be confused with scruffy TAMs. Indeed. Uh, I'm officially getting old because I don't leave the house without checking the weather first. No one needs McGee. It's not about getting old. You're becoming a pilot. Yes, yes, we always need to know the weather. The weather is one of the most important factors to consider when you're flying. Not just in the real world, but in the simulator as well. It comes into your fuel predictions, the runways you're going to fly, the direction of the traffic circuit, and so on. The weather here is vital. Vital. So it's a huge component. That's why we spend a lot of time on it. But without diving too much into it, be aware that there is an automated terminal information service that we can dial in and listen in and they'll explain to us what the weather is doing, the visibility, is it raining, the clouds, the temperatures, the dew point, the barometric pressure, any NOTAMs, active runways, so on and so on and so on. If you don't have access to the ATIS, well, we go the other way. We check out the METAR. If we don't have access to the METAR, well, local weather will do. Charts will do. There's, there's a number of different websites that will actually give you a prediction of the weather. One of my absolute favourites is Vent U Sky. So Vent U Sky is a grand owl Yoki Majigi now. Right, so this is Ventu Sky. I use this all the time. And it's very accurate in Ireland when it comes to uh, flying, right? So we can see here now at the moment, this is like looking at live time. There's high pressure dominating Ireland, right? 1,037 hectopascals. And this is all kind of hanging around here, meaning we have high pressure for the next few days, meaning it's going to be calm and warm. This is great. We love high pressure, right? So if we wanted to have a look at the wind... And we can change all the speeds over here on the right hand side. We want to look at knots. So if we're looking here, well, at the moment, well, we can see that at ground level, ground level, the gust of the winds, it's gusting maybe 10 knots, 15 knots. So it's a bit breezy, right? There's a bit of a breeze coming in here. But as that high pressure moves in, in which now we can get a bit of a forecast. So if we skip ahead, the high pressure is dominating here. Let's jump ahead a couple of hours. The high pressure is actually moving out. Now we're starting to get a bit of a forecast of what's happening kind of to the north and to the south. And if we go further, another couple of hours, right? This is what I use. A lot of pilots use this as well. But you get the idea. I think the Windy app does the same, right? Oh, my mom, she always knows the weather. Hey, got Potter Collies. Good to see you. Uh, if you don't like it, we know it's going to change in five minutes. That's in Texas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, now, we can also have a look at the precipitation. Rain. Is there any rain forecast? Now, why might rain be important to us? Have a look at what's happening down in and around kind of Italy. Italy's getting bashed out of it with bad weather at the moment. News fan just gifted a tier one sub to Kane Nafford. Look, I thank you very much indeed. Cheers, Kane. Look at that big shiny thing now. What's this weather showing you down here in and around kind of northern Italy? Look at the flashes on the screen. That's thunder, right? Kahari is getting absolutely lashed out of it. Absolutely, thunder. We don't want to go flying in thunder. Now, if we were to look at the temperature, well, we can see it. Plus 25, 26 degrees, high temperature, and, you know, you have cold air moving down. If you want to have a look, here's a high pressure, high pressure, low pressure, right? Like, it's, it's, this is how you get your idea of what the weather is going to do. And this is looking at tomorrow, by the way. That's a big right? 
So if we go back into our little map here and we go back into today's date, right? Today's date. Uh, Scruffy Tam just gifted a tier one sub to Got Border Collies. Ah, lads. Thank you very, very much indeed. Very kind. Outstanding support as always. Uh, and I very, very much appreciate it, guys. Thank you very much. So we're down here in Waterford, right? And uh, let's have a look. So Tuesday the 23rd. No, it's Monday, Murph. Into Monday. And let's have a look here at 7 uh, p.m. Or, or 8 o'clock. So the local temperature in Waterford in and around Waterford is 16 degrees Celsius. Now we can change all of these again. We can put them into Fahrenheit or whatever, right? But it's the wind, the wind speed. Okay, so the wind is blowing in from the north, right? The wind is blowing in from the north. So we can see that. And at ground level, see this like 10 meters above ground, 30 feet, up to 30 feet, give or take. Uh, the wind is coming in at around 10 knots. And the wind is blowing in from the north, right? So let's say if we decided to say, right, Murph, we want to fly at, I don't know, 3,000 feet, right? 3,000 feet, we want to fly at 3,000 feet. That's 1,000 meters. Well, at 1,000 meters, we're going to be facing a 20-knot wind. But if we were heading over to Shannon, Shannon is over here, right? Think about it now, lads. What's liable to happen if we want to fly from Waterford to Shannon and the wind is coming from the north and it's pushing everything to the south? What do you think is going to happen to our little airplane? If we if we turn our heading direct to Shannon, where are we going to track? Or how are we going to track? Do you remember we did this last week? Heading and track, course and all this? Yeah? What do you think is going to happen here? Right? The, the, the wind is coming from the north. We're going to drift. We're going to be headed for Cork. Correct. The wind is going to push our little airplane down the way. It's going to push it down to the south. So we need to aim off or we need to plan for that. Right? We need to plan for that. So this is known as our deviation or deflection. We need to work on, well, if the speed at 3,000 feet is going to be in and around, you know, 20 to 15 knots, and I want to head for Shannon, which is roughly going to be on a course of, I don't know, 290, right? Well, we'll probably have to fly at 310 because the wind is going to knock us across. This all comes into our flight planning. Now, because we're using visual flight rules, it becomes very, very easy. Why? Well, we can set out a number of landmarks along the way to make sure we can do small little corrections because we can we can see the ground. We can see mountains, rivers, lakes, forests, roads, towns and cities. You name it. We can see all these things, right? So that'll help us along. We need to crab. Yeah, exactly, lads, exactly. And then if you look at gusts, so the gusts are going to be important as well, but the gusts are going to be about the same. If you came across and you saw like 50 knot gusts, well, we know that the limit of our aircraft will hold about 20 at a crosswind. We need to be very, very careful. Now, what else is this telling you in terms of the wind speed? Without looking at a meter, without doing anything else, we know that the airport in Waterford is just here. It's around Tremor here. It's between Tremor and Dunmore East. That's the airport, right? So if we're to go in and have a look at said airport, right? Uh, for which I have a chart uh, somewhere in the house for it. Where did I put this? Uh, here. Here's Waterford Airport, right? There's the airport. So you can see that the runway points kind of to the north and a little bit to the south, yeah? So if we want to have a look at the airport, a bit of graph, and if we want to gather, well, what's the active runway in Waterford? Anyone know what the active runway is? It's 03 or 21. What will be the active runway? Bearing in mind the wind is coming in from the north. Runway 03, which means we're going to be taking off into the wind. Now, the wind isn't exactly coming in from the northeast, it's actually coming in a little bit from the northwest. So, this is going to create a little bit of a crosswind component. We'll figure that one out when we're on the ground, getting ready to take off, right? But it means then, if we were going to do our flight on VATSIM, we would have to say, okay, we now know that we're going to be taking off from runway 03, because that's the way the wind is blowing, right? And we've checked the forecast for the next day or two. There's no change. That's where the wind is coming, because there's a high pressure dominating over the Atlantic, right? So when we take off flying into the wind, we have to now start looking for some visual reference points to know that we're going the right way. Because we're flying with visual flight rules, we don't necessarily need to worry about headings or bearings or any of this jazz. So, what do we do here, lads? Well, the question is, uh, we need to look at the area. This is an actual chart uh, from the Irish Aviation Authority, and it is that for Waterford. Now, what's the first thing we notice on this chart? What is the one thing that stands out from anything else? There's a big circle in it, and there are letters around the circle. 
It's Class Charlie Airspace. Now, can we enter Class Charlie Airspace? Sure we can. What do we need to enter Class Charlie Airspace? Well, let's go into our little uh, gadget. Where are you? Come here now. Come on now. We can do this together. Shh. Airspaces. So we need to go here and figure out, well, what do we need to get into the airspace? Yeah. So if we have a look at here now, uh, putting it all together. Da, 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 da. Equipment, C call, transponder and use VF4. Where is this now? I'm trying to remember where our little um, information was. Can we enter this airspace? Yeah. So it's Class Charlie. Now, this is from the United States. There are some differences between America and Europe. Right. But you can scroll down. You get an idea. So if we were to look at, say, right, Class Charlie, Delta Charlie. So Charlie, uh, Class Charlie is the type of airspace class that surrounds other large airports, uh, but those with less passenger capacity. OK, uh, the airspace is typically is from the surface up to about 4000 feet. OK, what do we need? Flight rules and pilot equipment. To enter a Class Charlie airspace, the pilot must establish two way radio contact, but specific clearance isn't required. There's some changes here between America and Europe, so don't worry. But we'll look at the equipment because these are pretty much the same. We need a Mode C transponder with ADSB out. Now, we get that automatically by using a VATSIM client, right? Pilots of all ratings may operate within the Class C. The speed limit of Class C airspace is 200 knots. Okay, so that's, you know, 200 knots uh, within four nautical miles of the airport unless we're told otherwise. So you often hear that on, like, some of your departures. Keep the speed uh, or a speed restriction of, you know, 250 knots or something, right? Cloud clearance and visibility. This is important because we're VFR. If we're under VFR conditions, pilots must have visibility of at least three square miles with a ceiling of at least a thousand feet and have cloud clearance of a thousand feet above, 500 below and 2000 feet across. But what do they mean by that? Well, if we're flying, right, and we're looking for clouds, we need to stay away from the clouds. Clouds are bad. Clouds are very bad. As fun as it looks like to be flying through the clouds, and it is a lot of fun, it's like hitting rumble strips. Really, it's that's that's how much they bounce you along, right? Um, but as VFR pilots, we need to maintain VFR. We need to maintain staying away from the clouds. Okay? Does that make sense? And then we have a little chart here because these are our VFR weather minimums. And the different type of airspace. So, for example, Class Echo, 5 miles. Class Charlie, Delta, Echo and Bravo clear of clouds, so on and so forth, all the way through it. Nighttime, daytime, the whole shebang is there, all right? So we need to make sure we're staying away from clouds. Again, how do we figure out what the clouds are doing? Well, you get it from your ATIS, you get it from the METAR, or indeed you can look at what the weather forecast is telling you, uh, which is over here. So if we were to say, right machine, what's the clouds doing, right? So we can break down the clouds here to say, right, total cloud cover, low clouds. So is there any low clouds? Yeah, we're getting low clouds, 60%, 40 20 10%. So we can kind of see what the clouds are doing, right? Now, visually, we can go into the sim, right? And I can put this onto live weather. And this will, this will give us a good idea. So the live weather in the sim should be telling me uh, that, yes, we're going to have some clouds, but also the wind is going to be coming in from the north. So if I select a METAR from the sim, it's going to tell me the winds are 010 at 9 knots, visibility is 9,000, and we've broken clouds at 4,000 feet. Okay. That's good. 4,000 feet. I can fly along here. Uh, once I clear the altitude, once I clear any obstacles, there's broken clouds at 4,000 feet. So to remain VF4, we've got to stay below 4,000 feet because they're broken clouds. Now that could change. That could change, right? So this is how it looks like in the sim. VF4 conditions. Yes, they are VF4 conditions, provided we don't go too high. You know what I mean? Does that make sense to us? So we know that the wind is coming in from the north, as noted there from the weather sock. Yeah, the wind is blowing from the north. We take off facing the wind, right? And uh, when we take off, we're going to find this direction. Now, visually, we know, before we even start looking at a map, what do we have on the horizon there? Well, what's all that stuff? That's where the ground starts getting bigger. We need to be careful because we need to maintain our separation or a distance from the ground. And if we do so, well, that's going to push us high up into the cloud. We should be careful, right? So this is where our flight planning comes in. Do we fly around mountains? Do we fly over mountains? And you have all this kind of cool stuff to get into your flight planning, right? So, with that in mind, I mean, we're moving at a rate of knots here. With that in mind, we can see here on Navigraph, it's giving us an idea. We can see, see this 4 and see this 4-4. Four, four. See these green numbers? But that's giving us an indication of the highest ground altitude, the highest point on the ground in this area, right? 
Okay. So we need to be careful. So 4,000 feet is kind of where we need to be above, right? If you don't have access to Navigraph, you can also get this from Sky Vector uh, because they actually have the terrain in Ireland done, right? So if we go into Sky Vector and we go into the good old Ireland, ramble across over here, uh, and we can do the same look. So if we zoom in down here to Waterford, you can see it, right? You can see the breakdown of the terrain. You can see 2,200, you can see 3,600, 2,200, and so on, and so on, and so on. Sky Vector, this is a free website. I use this a lot for the start of my flight planning. I just, this is what I use all the time. Now, these are all linked there as well, right? Uh, so, let's have a look. We're going to do a flight plan. We're going to depart here from Waterford. Echo India Whiskey Foxtrot, isn't it? Uh, Waterford, and we want to go to Shannon. Now, this is just going to draw a straight line across. It's not going to consider wind. It's not going to consider anything, right? This is where now we get to kind of plan our route because well we're via four pilots so okay for the vatsum event we might be saying listen we want to get there in the quickest way uh, possible yeah okay we do sure we do but we also want to make sure that we're not going to have to worry too much about avoiding the ground so what do we do here well we know that we need to take off into the wind that we're going to be flying somewhat to the north and we want to make sure that we're not going to go directly over any high mountainous areas so we could say for example well, let's fly out this direction first, right? And just drop it in there. And then we'll say, right, well, there is going to be high ground there, but sure, what if we what if we come down and, and follow a river? There's, there's already stuff here giving us visual reference points from this height. Now, there's also instrument stuff here. There's a VOR at Clamel. If we wanted to, we can navigate with that, but that's for a lesson down the road. That's when we start getting into our instrument flight rules because we'd be using that as a nav aid, right? So we can say, right, well, we can go up over kind of this river, heading on up towards Kilkenny, or we can kind of tip across by Clonmel. So let's say we'll tip across by Clonmel. And we can use a visual reference point near the mountain when we come across these mountains here. Yeah, that'll do the job. So we're going to have mountains out the left-hand side. After that, what are we going to do? Well, we're pretty much bang on now flying up towards Shannon. So if the wind is coming in from the north, any ideas what runway we're going to be landing on, friends? Any ideas? Dan Riley says Sky Vector is my friend when I fly in the same for VF4. Yeah, Sky Vector is brilliant. And you know, little nav map will do this to, to an, um uh, I think little ma nav map will actually include a lot more weather, you know. Um yeah, 06. So we can kind of interpret, hey, 06, well that's what we're going to plan. Now, we can check the charts for Shannon and they might turn around and say you can't use 06. There's a no tam. Someone crashed into the runway pappy lights or something, right? So you have to use 24. And then we're saying, well we can't actually land with a tailwind. It, it'll, it's, it's beyond the realm of possibility for our aircraft. Now, that's getting into all sorts of crazy scenarios. But we now know, okay, runway 06 is what we're going for. Yeah? So, can you remember from a couple of weeks ago? Now, bearing in mind, we're flying in to Shannon. And that's going to be under the control of ATC. So, before we even get into the airspace, we need to call them up and say, Hey, air a chance we can enter your airspace. We need permission. You can't just fly in there, right? So, if runway 6 is active, what do you think Shannon is going to tell us to do? We can't fly straight in because, you know, it's a left-hand circuit from runway 6, isn't it? It's a left-hand circuit. We know this because well, we've looked at the airport chart. So, if we plan our flight to say, well, listen, we're going to join on the crosswind under ATC. And once we cross on the... On the, on the once we join on the crosswind... But it's going to look a little bit something like this because we're now going to enter the circuit. Yeah? We're now going to enter the circuit. And this will all be explained to us uh, before we get there. But it's just to give you an idea, we're going to be entering the circuit into Shannon. Right? I think it's roughly there. There's a VRP down here anyway. And it's going to look something. Something like that. But see the way I'm planning all this now. This is where you kind of demystify the how did they do that? Do you know what I mean? This is how we do it. So we're saying now straight away, well, okay, if runway six is going to be active, does every chance the controller will tell us to do, hey, Murph, yeah, do a crosswind join and uh, report downwind. Okay, we know what to do. They'll tell us runway zero six is active. It's unlikely they'll tell us to do a right base join. Unlikely. But they might. They might. If you're unsure what kind of a join they'll ask us to do, well, you can revert back into our little handy book, you see, because we went through all of this. Where have I got this thing headed? What's in here? Look. So if you go to circuits, right, uh, down here somewhere, heading tracked, things to avoid, departing on route, go around, 
uh, we can have a look at the joining a circuit, right? Where is it now? Joining an aerodrome circuit. We can have a look at this one here. And this is a section in the book. And you can see straight in, turn left or right base, usually under ATC, unless we know the airfield very well. The crosswind join, right? It's usually under ATC. The downwind join, or we do the overhead join. Now, the overhead join is very, very popular at uncontrolled airports. It's also highly likely, Shannon will tell us, to join uh, or to do an, a standard overhead join. Now, it depends on the traffic that they're dealing with, right? Shannon is a busy airport, but it is possible. It's absolutely possible. So let's say now we need to change our plan and say, no, Murph, this is going to be a standard overhead join. Which is, that's right. Okay, so what we need to do, well, we need to delete you, delete you, and now we're going to plan for this overhead join. So we're going to do something like this, lads, look. So we're going to say, right, we're going to join the airfield and make life easy. We're going to say, well, hang on a second. Look at the mad river thingy here. We're going to see this from the air. There's a railway there, look. We can say, right, okay, when we get to the railway, just inside of Kuna, well, we, we, that's that's our last visual reference point. And then once we get to there, well, we know we're going to be flying in. Now, can anyone remember what was the rule of joining uh, a, or a standard overhead join? What was the rule, lads? What altitude do we do? Right? What do we need to do? Hmm. If we're doing a standard overhead join, what's going to happen here? Because if you think about it, right? The rule was we have to descend, yeah, to a, a thousand feet above circuit altitude, but we need to descend on the dead side. How does that work? How are we going to descend on the dead side? Because if we're looking at this circuit, but we're going to be overflying, we're going to be coming in from the dead side. So we could descend on this side here. Again, we can go back and have a look at our manual to say, well, hey, what in the name of Jesus do I do here, right? Um, where did I hide this one now? It's over here, look. So we need to work out to say, well, the standard overhead join, well, what do we do, right? And we go in and have a look at our circuit. So if we're joining here, look at this. We're doing all sorts of mad crazy. Remember, we need to descend on the dead side of the field, right? So we can fly in, join the circuit, we're descending, right, before we get there, straight across, you're clear to enter the circuit, you'll report over the circuit, because you have ATC, they're probably going to, they're, they're going to talk to you, you know, they're, they're going to see you on the scope. But you have the idea, right, and you're always on the lookout for other traffic. Now, we don't know what the tower is going to advise us on the day, therefore we're going to plan for a couple of different uh, options, right? For example, this is all well and good if we're coming in from Waterford. What if we're coming in from Donegal? Right? And what's between us and Donegal? And again, I'm looking at here, Sky Vector. This is free, so we can all look at this together. Donegal is in the very top left hand corner. This is Hammy Country, right? Donegal. And if we're looking at, well, you can say, Murph, well, if we fly straight down the way, well, there's air spaces we need to navigate around. But there is. And not only is there air spaces we need to navigate, but if we were planning a flight from Donegal, let's say we're going to plan a flight from Donegal. We already have the weather for the country. So we say, right, we're going to go out to Donegal and we want to fly down to Shannon. Right, very good. Zoom in here now, down into Shannon. Because you might actually get this for your flight. You could get this, right? So if we're looking at this, well, we know when we take off, yeah, when we take off from Donegal, well, we're going to take off into the north because well, we know the wind is blowing from there, yeah? And if we want to know, well, hey, what's the crack of Donegal? What way does the, uh, the L circuit go? Here's a chart for Donegal. I'm going to add this into the chat as well. And you guys grab a hold of that uh, and you can keep it there, right? Why isn't that working? The chat is broken. Hang on, lads. We'll fix it. Uh, will it work in here? Yeah. So grab that. Uh, and that's from uh, the Irish Aviation Authority as well. All right. Uh, will ATC always tell you to join? Martel, yes. If it's controlled, they'll tell you what to do, right? They'll tell you. They'll absolutely tell you what to do. In the unlikely event, if you're stuck and you need vectors, even though you're VF4, They'll give you a hand. They'll say, just turn right heading. Even though it's VF4, you don't need to. If you're stuck, their job is to get you down safely. That's it. There's no messing. They're not going to put you in harm's way. And, you know, it's it's Adam Guido and the guys at Fat Air who are going to be helping us for this event. They're the controllers for this event. Don't worry about making a mistake. No one's going to shout at you. No one's going to give out. If we make a mistake, they'll tell you, okay, you know, we'll get you down. And then they'll talk to you afterwards to say, so, you know, when you came in this way, try it this way the next time. And that's the way to deal with it, right? You know, you got it wrong. Repeat the whole thing. We're not into that. We're not into that at all. All right. So 
Uh, where can we get information on Donegal, lads? So, well, just do a simple Google, right? Now, there's one incredible, incredible website that I get a lot of information from, uh, and it's from uh, CIX. It's the VFR Club, right? And they're going to show us then what the crack is in Donegal. So if you have a look at some of the charts here, well, it's going to say, well, the transition level is five. Uh, it'll tell you what the circuit is, right? So let's have a look. Uh, runways, dimensions. Where's the circuit now? Surface height. Class C, that's all over ground. Uh, no fly areas, not applicable. Helicopter operations, uh, let's see. It doesn't actually say right hand or left hand, but we'll have a look. It's a left hand on zero three. Um, and it is a right hand, looks to be, on two one. Yeah. Now we can verify this. This is just the first bit of information here. We can get a lot more information if we need to. So let's open the EIGL charts. Here's the aerodrome chart. Let's go in and have a look at the information. So, aerodrome chart for Donegal, the elevation, all the uh, frequencies. Consult the no times for latest information, fair enough. Runway stand, runway holding, bearings are, linear ground, height and feet above air, uh, av or elevation, okay. Simple uh, approach lighting system, okay. Annual rate of change, that's fine. Notes, pushback not available on stands, runway surface is grooved. Okay, well, there's no one telling me here on this chart what direction we fly okay let's have a look here at the aerodrome obstacle chart now they're telling me is it a right circuit or left circuit no nothing here again so it's only a matter of figuring out all the charts right is right up here uh tower atis turbulence runway tip mount aerial visual holding here we go uh let's see here now in the event of radio failure not above 1500 feet uh to receive landing scale is there doesn't actually say what the uh, what the direction of the chart is. That's interesting. Okay, well, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Where else can I look for this? Uh, let's see. It's the same one. Uh, NDB. Okay, so here's a something look. Here's a something. So we can see transition altitude 5,000 feet for the area. Missed approach. Okay, here's a missed approach. Climb straight ahead. Climbing turn left. Uh, 3 DME, we had to do that one night as well, do you remember? Straight in approach, visual manoeuvring, instrument approach is only available when air traffic control zone is active, okay? So there's a question we can ask, uh, is what direction is the pattern? Now, the old rule of thumb here, the law would be, it's a left-hand circuit unless stated otherwise, right? Now again, if you don't know what it is, the day in question, well, we can ask. We can ask, right? We can ask. If we can't find out the information, which we can ask the question. You know what I mean? I just, I don't see it here on the charts. Uh, Cesar, good to see you. Good to see you. Um, Even though uh, the guys over at six are saying, well, you can do this. I, I don't see it here. It says like, west of the field, three zero left hand, two zero right hand. But I don't know where they're getting that information from. So if you're taking off from runway three zero, um, or zero three zero, it's to the left. And if you're taking off from Two one zero is to the right. Either way, we've got to keep out over the sea. Which makes kind of sense. Just terrain and all the sort of mad stuff in the right. I mean. Right, so if we move down the way then. Um, where is me uh, gadget on here? Sky Vector, right? So we're planning to say, right, well, it's going to be left-hand turns. Because, well, we'll take off on the circuit. And we'll enter a left-hand turn. So we'll say it's going to be roughly, roughly around here, right? So we'll drag this fella to around here. Then we're going to say, well, it's going to be left-hand turn. That's all gone kind of pear-shaped. There we go. So we're going to say, right, you come over here. And it's going to be a left-hand circuit. Uh, something like that. Plan. Don't mind me uh, fantastic kind of stuff here. And uh, we do the downwind leg. Something like that. Yeah. Plan. And we can do a departure on the downwind leg. We can extend the downwind leg. So we can actually leave the area on the downwind leg. If we wanted to. And then after that, we'd be heading our way down. Now, what are this? What are some of the considerations we need to focus on here, lads? What are we looking at here? We're flying directly through an airspace, right? Hey, Zaybot, good to see you. What happens if we're going to fly straight down through a uh, different airspace? But well, what do we need to consider? What does it tell us? No, you know, we can't just fly in there because, like, if we zoom in, it's going to tell you, hey, this is the surface up to five thousand feet. And if we go in and actually have a look at a chart, well, we can see. Well, hang on a second. It's Class Charlie from the ground up to seven and a half thousand feet. This is the actual. Okay, look, here we go. Sligo uh, ground to five thousand, and then you have 
ground to 0.75. So basically what it means here, from the ground to 5,000, you're going to be in Sligo's control. And from 5,000, pretty much up to 7,500, you go directly into Shannon, uh, Shannon control. Or, you know, it's unlikely you'll have uh, Sligo active. So Shannon will be looking after all the Shannon control. So we need to plan to say, right, well, if we're heading down from Donegal and we want to enter this Class C, well, because we're planning, what if they say no? What if they say, no, we're too busy. We can't handle your flight. But we need to plan for that, yeah? I mean, there's no point saying, ah, sure, we got this far, we have to turn back, right? So we, we'll, we'll hope that we can overfly the airport. We'll have to ask them, hey, can we fly in there? Failing that, well, we need to plan not to enter that airspace. Can we stay away from it? And this is where it might get a little bit tricky right because now we have a control zone the scottish fir is right beside us yeah and we need to figure out well where does that become active so we'll figure that one out here now in a minute but let's say for example okay we're not allowed to enter uh, sligo we need to plan to fly around sligo and again this is going to come into our fuel and everything else and we need to be careful of the wind that the wind doesn't blow us into position or out of position and so on and so forth yeah it's going to be the same at knock now we could be lucky we can get clearance through the glass the class charlie at Sligo and Knock and Galway. We could be very lucky, but let's plan that we can't. And because we're VF4, well, let's like let's make life a little bit easy, right? We'll pick a little visual reference point along the way because we can see, well, here is Athlone, look, right? Here's Athlone. Now, there's a TF4 over Athlone because there's a military barracks there, uh, but we have a big, massive lake. That's going to be easy to spot from the air. So once we get to the massive lake, well, sure, hang on. We're now coming into familiar territory. Look, there's Burr. So what if we go from Athlone? And what if we go straight over here? Can anyone remember what's here on the map? What's right there in that little area? Can anyone remember what was there? Tell them we have notes from our mans. You could do that. You could do that. Yes. Oh, Gibba, that's really handy. Gibba just found... A flow widget that allows you to look up the VATSIM ATIS for airports uh, with an ATIS available. Oh, that's really handy. Give a good man yourself. Uh, there's a spit doing arrows there. Maddy Lose, there absolutely is. That's Portumna, lads. So suddenly we're now in familiar territory. Yeah, that's Portumna. We've flown here before. And again, you can go down by Mount Shannon. Yeah, and we can go in by Scarif. And we know then that we can talk to the tower. So now if you're coming in from Donegal, well, if runway six is active, how are you going to join the circuit then? We're just going to join on the downwind leg. Simple as that. We'll join on the downwind leg. Now that's a little bit wide, Morph. We'll join on the downwind leg. Yeah. And suddenly now we're saying to ourselves, Jesus, this isn't this isn't too tricky. Should we kind of know what's going to happen from this from this area? Right? And there we go there. So we'll be joining the circuit from the downwind leg. Now again, you're going to be under ATC, but at least now we have an idea to say, well, this is how we're going to plan to get there. And we have to be aware that there are airspaces, and it doesn't matter where you're flying in the world, be it in the US, Europe, it doesn't matter. If you're entering airspace, in particular Class Charlie, well, you need to ring them up. Hey, can I do this? Now, if we were like flying in the Blerio, we can't get in there at all, because we've no communication, we've no two-way radio. You know what I mean? Uh, is there a special way to cross the zone when cleared to do so? What do you mean is there a special way to cross the zone? Usually you would do it as quickly as possible and you would advise them what your altitude is. Can you go above 7,500 feet? DCS, you can. But even if you do, you're still within the Shannon FIR. You're still within the Shannon FIR because these guys take over up to uh, 24,500 feet. So if you were to fly over this area, right, the ground up to seven and a half thousand feet, yes, is the answer. You could overfly. But again, you might have restrictions on your aircraft. And again, you have to be very careful with the weather, bearing in mind we know there's broken clouds at around 4,000 feet. But yeah, you can. Yeah. You have, a, you, have a, you have usually a height restriction. And you have what's known as a special VF4 or, or, you know, you can fly at high altitude, right? You can request that. But again, it, a lot of planning would then come in to... Um, a lot of planning would come into um, restrictions when it comes to the weather, right? Because the weather changes and now you're above a cloud layer, you're in trouble. Your aircraft mightn't have uh, anti-ice, it mightn't have de-ice, it mightn't have any of that jazz, and suddenly you find yourself in the soup. Disaster, recipe for disaster. If that happens in the real world, usually you'll see aircraft turning around. They've got it wrong. Yep, turn around. 
you know, we're picking up icing and all this sort of jazz. IFR or bust. Yeah. Like, what we'll be able to do later on uh, in life, right? After, you know, give it a couple of months. But like, the idea would be, there's no reason why we couldn't switch to IFR at a certain point. We can fly VFR to a certain point, then we could pick up our IFR. Because, okay, yeah, we're going to fly higher, we're going to go above this or whatever. You can absolutely do that, right? You can cancel your IFR and return to VFR. You can cancel your VFR and put in your IFR. But once you have a flight plan done in there, once they know, hey, no matter getting your flight plan, we can see it. We're expecting you to call us up and say, I'm here, I'm flying overhead for Tunda. I want to put my I want to go IFR now to Dublin. Once it's pre-planned, you're okay. You know what I mean? So, how are we doing now? How are we doing now? Are we learning together? Or is anyone's head sore? My head is sore, but I think you are doing great, right? These are a great bunch of lads. Uh, but we are doing great. We're covering a lot of ground here. But again, our focus, lads, is getting um getting ourselves ready for the Vatsim event. And it's only us. It's only us doing this Vatsim event. You know what I mean? So we'll have a bit of fun with it, right? We'll have a bit of fun. So that's kind of planning now from Waterford, and it's a bit of planning then from Donegal. Next up we have Weston. And we've all sorts of crazy going on here. What's all this look? Because military airspace, we need to be very, very careful. We need to be very careful up here. So if you want a more accurate map, we can go in and have a look. Because you have all of this jazz to worry about, right? Two and a half thousand feet up to, you know, 24,000 feet. Restricted airspace completely. So if anyone has flown out of Weston before, well, usually what happens, you hightail it up to the M4. You get out of this neck of the woods because, well, you have the lads on Baldonnell flying around, yeah? So when you take off from Weston, the idea would be get out of the M4 and go on up this way. And they actually handrail this neck of the woods here. Because a lot of flights actually go from Weston. And they head up there to either Edwardstown. There's, um, what's the name of the airport up there? Not Edwardstown. Uh, uh, you've Valley, uh, you've Abbey Shrew, but there's one further up. What's it called? It's over Mullingar there. Where's Mullingar? That's at Lone Murph. Mullingar. Here, you've Abbey Shrew, but what's the other one? Is that the one down by Ballymahan? It is, it is, it is. That's the one down by Ballyman, right? Abbey Shrew. But I think there's a little airport in Ballyman. I could be very wrong. I thought there was. Google Maps. This will, like, absolutely satisfy the whole idea here now, right? So, zoom out there now, Jemima. And uh, zoom in here now. I'm almost certain there's something over at Ballyman. Why am I thinking that? Ballyman. Just off the road here, look. I could be raging. Uh, let's see. There's Ballymahan. Was there not something in Ballymahan, lads? Am I raging? The car oh, there's that centre park place. Uh, I'm almost certain there was an airfield out here. I can't remember now. You've had me there it is. You've had me shrewd anyway. Right? Is that it? No, that's a field, Murph. Jesus, lads, is there not a little airfield in Ballymahan? Am I gone absolutely nuts altogether? Ballymahan Airfield. Ballymahan Airfield. Abbey Shrill. Abbey Shrill. Is it just Abbey Shrill I'm thinking of? Off the main road. Hmm. Okay. Well, you've Abbey Shrill anyway. That's that's a cool place uh, place because you come in kind of over one and gar and there's all bogs there. You got hopped around the place, right? But anyway, I digress. If we're going to be flying from Weston, you've 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 to contend with a lot more traffic. Dublin is always going to be busy. Even on Vatsim, Dublin is always going to be busy, right? And actually, if we have a listen in here now, let's do a bit of messing because I'm after hearing uh, Dublin come on, right? So if I open up, uh, let's see, if we open up this, let's have a listen, that's right? Let's have a listen. See, can we get this working? Uh, let's see now. Connect and a PA28B. Failed to connect to the host. Uh, let's have a listen. So I just want to see where frequencies are coming along. So Dublin approaches up, right? So check this out, right? So I'm going to turn on the battery. And if you have a listen, if you have a listen to a radio. There's every chance this is going to go dead. Do I have a GPU? Uh, no, there's no GPU. Okay, so the frequency for Dublin approach, uh, one to one decimal one. So let's have a listen, right? So we go in, uh, one to one decimal one. Why won't you work? Uh, radio? It's Murph? Really? Okay, one to one decimal one, please. You're joking. 
Let's have a listen, will you? Why can't we change the frequency? That's like shagged, is it? We do it in here? Okay. One, two, one, decimal one. Enter. Transfer. Uh. I don't know why we can't do it in here, look. That's okay. Now, is this COM1 or COM2? COM2, right? Let's have a listen. So this is a Dublin approach. Now, if we wanted to, just for the sheer gas, we can actually call up and do a radio check. Right? Just to see can we be heard and if he can hear me. You know what I mean? So we try it for the crack. I see the way you have all this degradation. It's because we're on the ground and we're trying to listen into Dublin. VATSIM will simulate the distance between point to point. So if we went flying and we went up a little bit further up the road, we'll hear them as clear as day. These are the little things to consider. If you ever get the chance, jump onto VATSIM as an observer, right, as an observer, and just have a listen in, particularly at an airport you think you're going to be flying out of. Does that make sense? So we can kind of hear him, but we're, we're too far away. He, he's, he's, he's just not our kind of cup of tea at the moment. But we can see that there is ATC coverage now up in Dublin. And they'll probably have a couple of flights to deal with. But whenever you see it, don't be afraid to jump onto VATSIM. And especially do it in a way that you're uh, an observer. But then you don't need to worry about doing anything. You're just sitting there. You can load in your aircraft. You're as an observer. Common sense prevails. Don't put your aircraft directly on a stand. Get it out the way somewhere. Put it in parking. And then just have a listen on the frequency. And if you build up the courage, well, sure, give them a radio check. Give it a blast. See what happens, right? They can't give out to you. Do you know? So if you can do that, it's brilliant, right? Brilliant. Now, we can probably disconnect this, look. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, look, dear. Right. So uh, what else do we need to do here now? So we were talking about our flight planage and our air spaces, yeah? So Weston is going to be something different altogether because well, we need to be very careful, very careful not to go into this military area. And we can't help it. When we take off from Weston, we're inside Baldonnell's uh, uh, airspace. Yeah. So there is, see this kind of outer ring here? See this outer ring or the inner ring, right? You're not allowed in there at all, at all, at all. Do not enter there, right? Because that's, that's, that's directly over the airport. And you see the way you have the lines here? So see the way we can take off? See what the chart is showing you, look. You can take off, but you have to like, scoot. Don't go in here. It's restricted. That makes sense? So that needs to come into our flight planning again. And like, you know, when we take off, stay outside of Dublin. And we have to stay below 2,000 feet. Western, surface to 2,000 feet. Stay below 2,000 feet in this area. So we'll, we'll do a little bit more work on Weston or Weston uh, later. Because there's, there's a lot more going on at Weston, right? If you were to look at Weston Airport here, um, well, hang on. Do I have... Uh, do I have... Airport technical charts, air traffic control, a left circuit off runway 25 or a right circuit off runway 07 results in penetration of the encroaching ILS approach to Baldonnell, as these are the preferred directions for circus to boat runways, an agreement exists between Weston and Baldonnell for same. There you go, there's some of the answers, right? What do you do for, uh, look at this, so here's, here's the instructions for your VFR arrival and also your runway 25 left circuit. On reaching 1000 feet Q and H, left turn onto the crosswind and continue the turn onto the downwind, making sure you are north of the railway line at all times. Hey, that's kind of cool. Stay north of the railway line at all times. Well, let's go in here and have a look. We need to stay north of the railway line at all times. See the railway line? See the railway? So we need to stay north of that puppy at all times. That makes sense? So you can kind of see the information they're giving you at each airport. Now, what we'll do, we'll probably do a flight for each of these, and it's a rinse and repeat, step by step. What do we say? How do we say it? When do we say it? And then we'll go, we'll do the flights. We'll actually do the flying part of these all together, right? And if anyone is stuck, uh, or if you want to learn a little bit more, well, absolutely, I'm more than happy to jump on to um, to Discord, and we can do one-to-one, -one and I can help you out. And if anyone is around to help other people, well, sure, that's what we do. You know what I mean? So, yeah, give us me a link there. That was fierce handy, actually. I need to have a look at that. Uh, it's a flow widget, right? Let's have a look. Look up the VATSIM ATIS for airports uh, with an ATIS available, or when ATIS is available. So it's a little plug-in you can put in. That's kind of handy. V ATIS for uh, KDFW. 
Tim Wells, good man yourself. Like you'll see that there's all these really cool, handy features now to make um your VATSIM experience that a little bit easier. It removes a lot of the kind of what do we do here or how do we do it? You know what I mean? It makes it a whole lot easier. So I give out that's a great find out. I'll put that uh I'll put that link in the chat there, lads. If anyone wants to grab that, because that does look super handy, right? Why are you connecting to me, chat? I'm in there now. Right. Right, okay, so that was the idea. So that's that's a quick look at the airports. We'll leave Weston for next week because there's a lot more to, to go on there. Donegal, we're happy enough and we know that if we have to um, deviate from our flight plan from Donegal, uh, and the reason being is we're not allowed to get access to Sligo, uh, Knock or Galway, well, we can go back into familiar territory, Athlone, Portumna, Mount Shannon and in, right? Waterford something similar again we have to make sure we know what the weather is doing uh, and if it's going to be Weston it, it's no difference you can see there's all sorts of airspace here we need to kind of work around now we've already flown into this area here can anyone remember what this airspace here is around Maddie <coughs> Matty Losa redeemed uh, turning Gibbo's lights off that's hilarious Gibbo was probably sitting in his gaff now and all his lights just turned off that's hilarious MTA can anyone remember what an MTA was an MTA, lads. Can anyone remember? An MTA. I'll give you a hint. The first one stands for military. Right? Military. And it's not a restriction. It's more of a warning area or a danger area. Yeah? Military training zone. Correct. Or training area. Military training area. That's it, lads. So they're just letting us know, hey, there's military training operating from the ground up to 45,000 feet. Be careful. Now, if, the, if this was active, we'll be told. Aetis will tell us, right? Um, Shannon uh, Control will tell us. We can tune into Shannon Control. The FIR, they're going to tell us what's going on. We can tune into a FIS, Flight Information Service. We can do all these things. We can do all these things, right? So we don't need to worry about it. We can enter those areas. What's around Waterford, look? If you have a look here, right? Look at all this glider area. But what do we know about gliders? And this isn't a tricked question. What do we know about gliders? Why why might it be dangerous if we're entering an area with gliders? Any thoughts on that? Um I'm used, don't give them back the points. Gliders mightn't have radios. Voyaging, yeah, that's a good point. A lot of them tend to, just for safety, but yes. Uh, no engine. Yes, Keen. Why is that important? Why as a pilot, if you're looking at glider activity, them not having an engine, why is that important? What, what if they're flying kind of directly to you? Or they're descending rapidly? Um, you don't hear the gliders coming? Well, maybe. Maybe. Um, they mightn't have ADSB. That's for certain. They, they won't appear in your radar. Also, what altitude are these uh, gliders going to be at? Right? So they're a huge risk. For for a pilot, glider activity areas are a huge risk. They tend to be slow moving, they're constantly changing their altitude, and they may not have radio, right? And we have to give way to gliders. That's why they're on the map as warnings. Be careful, there is glider activity. Now, if we were leaving Waterford and there was a NOTAM or the ATIS or the tower was up, they would say, caution, glider activity at Rathgormick. Ah, okay, I better stay out of that area so. Right? You'd have to stay out of that area. It makes sense, doesn't it? Like, again, on VATSIM, if there's glider pilot, is there even glider pilot stuff on VATSIM? Maybe, I don't know, right? But you could, for instance, tune into, uh, you know, VATSIM and say, uh, they have a weird flarm system, yeah. Like, you can tune into VATSIM and say, you know, caution, I'm doing this. And if you look at where Waterford is, it's right between two massive glider areas. Look at the friggin' airspace they put around the glider area for Mount Lance, uh, Mount Leinster. It's absolutely massive. Look, it's huge. It's about a, a quarter of the country. Massive, right? So at all times, when we're in Waterford airspace, unless we go out by kind of Tremor and tip down by Dungarvan, we're going to be flying inside a glider area. We're inside it. We can't get around it, right? So we need to be on the lookout. We need to listen and we need to be on the lookout. Is there glider activity? And if so, where are they? Now, see the way there are many more little circles here. Yeah, Bally Murphy, great spot. Now, this neck of the woods gets interesting because now we're in a glider area, but we're also entering the military training area. Yeah, 
because now we're coming up kind of Carlo, Bagnus Town, all this neck of the woods, yeah? And then if you ramble out further out this way, Carnu, Gory, head up this way, you're going up towards kind of Wooden Bridge. Then before you know it, you're in towards Glen Malor and uh, the Glen Vamal. Lots of mountains up here. You're going to have glider activity and military activity for that, right? They are hang gliders at Mount Lest uh, Leinster. They can be. That's why it's a much bigger space. Because they don't need to, like, look. It says glider area at Mount Leinster, ground to three and a half thousand feet. What does that tell you? Well, okay, we can overfly it to five and a half thousand feet. You know what I mean? This kind of jazz. But we just need to be aware. You're looking at it on the map and you're thinking, wait, can I enter there? Yes, of course you can. You can of course you can, right? Because it's not, a, it's not technically restricted airspace. It's just saying, hey, be careful here, right? And again, if you're unsure what restricted airspace is, jump back in and have a little look at our, um, at, uh, in our book here when we talk about airspaces, yeah? So if we go down here, we say, right, Murph, tell me all about airspaces and why it's important. Uh, where are you? You're down here, look. And we can learn all about it. Ground operations and so on and so forth. It's all there. It's all there in the book, right? Uh, now, uh, interesting question. Parachuting. Yes, parachuting. Why might parachuting be important? Well, let's have a look at Donegal, for example, right? Because these lads are friggin' nuts. Now, you can see here on this chart from Navigraph, it's not really telling us much about Donegal in terms of, you know, airspace, right? We can see that there is PJE area. Does anyone know what PJE? Give it a give it a guess, right? PJE area aviation charts. Anyone have a guess? Meet missiles. Parachuters. Parachute. Hello there. Yeah. Uh look there, sim pilot. Thank you very much indeed. Para jumpers. But it's, it's basically when you see it, it means that there's parachuters there. And okay, Vatsim doesn't or not Vatsim, sorry, the uh, the other gadget doesn't have it. But if you zoom in here, lads, have a look at this. This is the actual AIP, right? Here's the runway. And what have they got in the freaking runway? It's a parachuting symbol. So they actually do parachute jumping in the direct vicinity of the airport. Donegal because actually they land on the dunes beside the runway so that's what they do or they go down onto the beach or they can land in the football pitches across the way that's what they do in Donegal so there's parachute jumpers there now does that mean there's going to be parachute jumpers uh, when we go flying there or how might we know hey uh, we want to go flying in Donegal um, can we can we find out if there's parachuting activity where might where might we find that information right parachute jumping agents <laughs> parachute jumping exercises correct no tams. That's where we find it. And no tam is a notice to airmen. No tam. Notice to airmen. Information to the pilot. That's what it is, right? So if we want to have a look at, uh, I don't think I can get no tams here. Let's have a gawk. Let's have a gawk. So if I have a look at airports and we type in uh, Donegal, Echo India, Delta, Lima. We open up the gadget here, open up the airport, and let's have a look at the charts. No tams. Here we go, lads. There's no tams. So aerodrome hour of service. Can you guys see this? So we have the aerodrome hours of service monday uh 6 40 to 10 30 11 to 3 30 and half four to 10 past seven okay and then our center right and then older pappy runway 21 furthest left pappy right is unserviceable so the pappy on runway 21 on the left hand side is broken these are no times these are telling us look the airport is actually going to be up and running between these times right now does that mean you can't access the airport outside of these times does it mean that the aerodrome is closed or it's just uncontrolled? What are your thoughts here, lads? Uh, sorry if you've covered this, but why not plan over water from Waterford or Donegal and save a lot of hassle by dodging terrain and conflicts? Huge question, Givo. It's a huge question. So again, when it comes into flight planning or VFR, right, think about it. If you kind of venture... Now, you can. You can do what's called handrailing. You ever hear of handrailing? You know a handrail on a stairs? Well, in navigation, handrailing means you're staying very, very close to land or a forest or a road. You're going to handrail it, metaphorically speaking. Meaning that, yes, you could absolutely fly very close to the coastline. However, you need to maintain VFR. If, you can't see, if you're only looking at water, which you've, you've lost VFR, you, need, you now need to rely on your instruments. Also, depending on the airspace you're flying in, depending on the aircraft, and in particular, depending on the aviation authority, there are restrictions built into how far out to sea you can actually fly, right? In a lot of cases in Ireland, I think it's 40 miles out, isn't it? I need to double check that, but I think it's something like 40 miles. So in, in, if it was simple, yes, 
So we'll just fly around the thing. But you mightn't clear all the airspace just by flying around it. And you can't exactly go, you know, all the way out to sea. Right? Follow the waves in the water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll, we'll ask the question with the IAA. IAA, restriction on distance over water via four. Right? Flight planning. Here we go. Within the state. Here we go. Uh, requirement for submission of the flight plan. So let's say water. Uh, let's see here now. Okay, Waterford now, Waterford now. Here we go. Within the state for any flight of at least a turtle, uh, sorry, within the state for any flight of which at least a total of 30 nautical miles is over water. Requirement for the submission. If you're going to do at least 30 miles out over water. Right? Now, like, I mean, you can fly via 4 from Ireland to England. You can actually do, you can do that via 4, but like, you can do it by visual flight rules, right? Fly a heading or whatever else like that, and that's your flight plan. But usually, if you're going out over water, a whole load of other rules that aren't applicable necessarily to a flight simulator would take over, right? What might they be? What might be a rule that wouldn't be applicable to a flight sim, but would be in the real world? If you're flying out over water. Nighttime? Well, yeah, most of Ireland doesn't have nighttime flying. Most of it. You can't get special licenses to do it. What would be something at night time? Uh, equipment. Equipment. And what would we mean by equipment, Gibbo? So, okay, our aircraft is going to have a transponder, an emergency locating transmitter, if we need one, yeah? What about life jackets? What about a raft? What about, um, Jesus, what about uh, flares, right? So there are certain rules depending on, there are rules that you can get into the real world side of the things to say, well, if you're going to go out over the water, you need this equipment. It's no different than if you look at a class Charlie airspace, well, your aircraft needs this equipment in the sim. It needs a two-way radio. It needs to have ADSB out, as in we can track you. Al uh, that's altitude reporting. Same thing, yeah? Squawk mode Charlie. It needs to have these things. In the real world, if you want to fly out over the sea, well, you need to have all this. There was a great, um, and this is the thing, right? This is where it makes it interesting. It depends on the local um aviation authority wait till you hear this so ice pilots for which we're all a huge fan of these lads right Hang out of your hats, boy. they flew two cl4s from the northwest territories all the way over to turkey and they went via the uh the azores right well the rules of canada at the time they must must fly in survival suits now Realistically, they had to go off and get the training done. They had to be certified for long distance over water. They had to get like additional fuel tanks put on the aircraft and so on and so on. But the aircraft, even though they had extended fuel and the pilots were highly experienced, they had to go off and actually fly. They were told you must fly the entire route over the base of water in a survival suit. But they didn't after a while. They said, feck this for a game of soldiers. It's too warm and I can't breathe in the thing. In actual fact, the life jacket jackets were causing more of a risk to their well-being than not wearing them. But you get the idea. Right. So if you were to apply like and here's the thing, right? A flight plan isn't always approved. They could turn around and say, No, yeah, you're not good. you're not doing that. No, huh? what do you mean they're not doing that? You're not doing that. That can happen. But again, it's more to do with real world stuff. But just bear in mind, if you want to do a flight plan via four and you're gonna say, Right, we're gonna go out over the water, you absolutely can. Well, how do you navigate over the water? You know what I mean? Unless you're down by kind of, you know, dingle, fungi. Right? Uh, you can go down to Fungi there and he'll kind of sort us out. Does that make sense? All right? It's the same over lakes and all this sort of jazz. Minimum altitudes and, you know, what's your glide distance going to be? I read a rule once uh, from an AIP. I think this was for, it was for parachuting. It was dropping parachutists out around Wexford, right? And I think it was dropping them eight miles out. But the idea was the aircraft was limited, or sorry, the distance was limited based on if the aircraft immediately stopped flying, as in engine failure, it had to have a minimum safe glide distance to make it back to landfall. If it passed that minimum safe glide distance, it couldn't go out for any further. And that changes on the region. The weather has an impact. Temperature has an impact. You can imagine all the sorts of head scratching that goes on there, right? Lots and lots of stuff. But anyway, a great question though. Great question. But for us, for the moment, like we could tip across different areas. Like I remember what they do, what some of the boating lads do. People drive that's right friends you drive a boat they drive their boat between dublin and hollyhead and what they do 
they stay slightly left of the car ferries and they use the car ferries as their visual reference points. They'll stay behind them for as long as possible and then they use the fella coming toward them as the next marker. And by the time he passes them, well, another one has gone that direction as well. That's actually how they navigate. That's mad, isn't it? That's mad, right? Mad. Anyway. Um. So yeah, that's, that's, that's how we're looking here now, right? So back into our little book. Uh, where is it now, Murph? Yes, yes, yes. So uh, now, flight planning and putting it all together. So this is our second lesson. When we did our second lesson, we spoke about, well, how do we put the whole shebang together, right? How do we, how do we start on the ground? How do we talk to ATC? How do we plan our flight? How do we fly it? And how do we land? And all the while, we're going to be talking to ATC along the way. Well, this is how we've done it, right? And again, this little booklet goes through it, word, line, everything. Line by line, right? So for example, we will be on Shannon ground. And what we want to do, we want to fly, uh, I don't know what we want to do. We want to do, what's this now? Circuits, is it? Uh, yeah, we want to fly three circuits around Shannon under the control of ATC. All right. So it would start off something like this. And remember, the details will differ. These will always differ depending on your call sign and the weather. Fair enough? So this is how it would sound like. Shannon Ground, Echo India, Tango Tango Mike. Echo India, Tango Tango Mike, Shannon Ground, pass your message. Echo India, Tango Tango Mike is a Cessna 172, general aviation parking with information Bravo, request VFR circuits and engine start. Echo India, Tango Tango Mike, you are approved for VFR circuits and engine start. Squawk VFR, active runway 06, Q&H 1011, call for taxi. Approved for VFR circuits and engine start. Squawk VFR. Active runway is 06. QNH 1011 for Echo India Tango Tango Mike. Now, sounds like an awful lot, but a lot of this becomes kind of muscle memory, right? What are we doing? Well, us. Who do we want? Shannon Ground. Who are we? Well, we're our, our call sign. Shannon Ground will say, our call sign, who they are, and what do you want? So we tell them who we are what we are, where we are, and what do we want. Who are we, what are we, where are we, and what do we want. They are the four basic principles. Who, where, what, sorry, who, what, where, and what do we want. Who are we, what are we, where are we, and what do we want. The four, right? Just focus on the four. And don't worry about getting the, um, the phraseology bang on. Once you're able to follow this to a degree to say, listen, this is me call sign, this is me plane, or the type of aircraft, this is where I am, and this is what I want. They'll work with you. That's enough for them to work with. Yeah. So that was to do circuits. And through each step of this lesson, all the different stages, it goes from startup, taxiing, departure, doing all our circuits, for which there was three of them, touch and goes. Then we find we finish up with a, a full stop landing and then all the way to taxi back. And then we shut it down. Then we look at flight plans. Now, flight plans are the big thing for us because, well, we're going to be doing these when we're doing our Vatson flight. And what's important here is, well, we need to make sure that we're giving the right information. Now, we can do this using the uh, VATSIM client, which is really handy, or we can just go onto the VATSIM website, or you can do it through SIMBRIEF. Again, really, really handy, right? So planning a VFR flight, and this is what we spoke about tonight. We're going to be planning a VFR flight for our community's first VATSIM event. But what does that mean? Well, before deciding on where to fly, we need to plan. We need to check the route, the aircraft type, the location, the weather, the traffic, airspace, and even the ATC coverage. They're all the factors that we need to uh, consider first, right? So, the route. We need to plan for fuel. How many waypoints? And we don't need to plan it difficultly. It can be very simple, right? The aircraft type. It can be straightforward. But always remember that when you're flying online, you'll need to be competent and proficient with the characteristics and management of the aircraft and its systems. Don't jump into a plane you don't know. But, you know, keep it simple. By all means, afterwards, yeah, jump into your more, you know, peculiar and more systems-heavy aircraft. But when you're starting off to avoid some sort of a bad, you know, experience, keep the aircraft simple. So you're not worried on how do I get the airplane to do this? You're focused more on doing this. You know what I mean? Okay. Location. We need to consider the rules applied to the location. Are they the Federal Aviation Authority? Are they ICAO? Right? Where are we flying in the world? And we also need to get familiar with the area. Points of interest. What are the hazards? Visual reference points. Airports. And so on. The weather. 
Well, with the sim, we can determine our own weather, but it's always fun to use real world conditions. This is the most realistic, and VATSIM controllers usually operate with current weather when controlling. Usually. We can ask them not to. They'll always give you the Q and H. We also uh, need to know our en route and destination weather. That's so important. We could be taken off. How many, like, have you ever gone on your summer holidays and you leave your house and it's a scorcher in your shorts, right? And then your parents or guardians bring you down to, like, the seaside and it's raining. Right? Has it ever happened? It happens. Do you know what I mean? Hey, Muttley is here. Good to see you. He says, uh, good evening all. Hope you had a good weekend and a fine Monday. And to you, Muttley. And to you. It's like, you know what I mean? You suddenly end up down the road and it's lashing rain. So we need to check what the weather is going to do when we're flying on our on our way to our destination and then also the destination itself. It's important, right? Um, Forecasts are important as there are many VFR conditions require certain minima to be able to fly. So say, for example, we wanted to land at Shannon, but the weather in Shannon is now socked in. There's fog in the area. We can't do VFR. We can't fly VFR. It turned into IMC conditions. Ah, what do we do, right? Um, so we, it all goes into our planning. Traffic is important. Air traffic is an important consideration. Are we planning to fly near busy airports? Or perhaps there's a VATSIM event already planned. But what do we do? How do, like, what do we do? Are we going to go flying when Cross the Pond is on and say, right, lads, let's all pick our little VFR aircraft and we're going to ramble out here uh, beside Dublin, you know, as they're getting ready for a flight. We're not going to do that. Airspace and ATC coverage. We need to check our maps and make sure that we are aware of what airspace types we will be entering and knowing if ATC is available. Not only the airspace we're going to enter, but the airspace we need to ask permission to enter. And we'll do all of these things. We'll do it step by step by step, right? So, uh, then we go through our flight plans. How do you make it work? This is all information on how to fill it out. Again, just have a read over it. It's handy to know. There's some examples here using VPilot, right? X pilot looks pretty much the same if you want to fly on um if you want to fly on X plane right um and it, it goes through all the different letters cell cal codes equipment suffixes a whole load of stuff you don't necessarily need to worry about just yet just be aware they exist all right so moving on the transponder this is very important because well this is how ATC are going to see us we can turn on our transponder and well are we using a squawk code that's a four digit identifier known as squawk um, we need to know what the different uh, squawk codes mean. There are some reserved for emergencies. There are some reserved at certain airports around the world. There are some reserved for VFR operations. So we need to be aware that there are certain codes we need to be careful of. All right? So the transponder. Well, we know how to put in a code, but do we know what actually the controller can see when we turn on our transponder? And I've given kind of different uh, displays here. That's Euroscope. Uh, and we have stuff here then as well of what the controller is looking at. They'll look at the aircraft uh, squat code. They'll look at its speed and its direction. They'll see all of these things. All right. Then we go down and we look at the transponder uh, operation. Off, standby, on, alt, and TST. Well, let's talk through them. Off is off. Standby means the transponder is, it's, it's electrically charged. It's good to go, but it's not responding to any interrogation pulses and it's not sending information. On means it's on. The transponder is on and it's going to send mode alpha only. Now, that doesn't that doesn't work with VATSIM, so don't worry about that. ALT means altitude reporting. That means it's alpha plus Charlie, and that's what we call the um, altitude reporting. That is your mode C, lads, right? Mode C. Then your different transponder codes. Test is a test, and then you have an ident button here. A controller might ask you to ident, identify. So they'll say, okay... Echo India, Tango Tango Mike, Squawk 1234, ident. Okay, I'll say Squawk 1234, and I will ident. Or here's your here's the flash or whatever. Here's ident. I press the ident button, and that'll give a ping on the ATC screen. They'll see it go bing. Ah, there he is, the devil. We've located him. And that's what they do. All right. So uh, that's the transponder. We need to get used to that because we're going to be using that quite a bit. Batsim comes with its own handy handy little um yeah me, me, me voice is taking a bash it sounds very sexy though doesn't it right it sounds amazing ah right okay um vatsim has uh or v pilot has its own um it, it's it, it's effectively a transponder right i mean that'll put in the code for you you can set it up to say hey 
as soon as I get airborne, I want to squawk, uh, squawk mode charity automatically. You don't turn on your transponder when you're on the ground at the ramp. No need for that. Not unless you're asked to specifically by ATC, right? Too many drinks at the Met. I'm coming down with something, lads. You can hear it in the voice and everything. But on the good side, I might be able to sound like Morgan Freeman. I'll have to do recordings now. This is going to be brilliant. Um, yeah, apologies for the voice, lads. Murphy, you didn't shut up for the last two hours. I just, 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 right, you know, anyway. V pilot menu bar note, mode C and the ident buttons. Mode C will be lit turquoise. Ooh, it could be teal. Could be teal, right? Um, anyway, have a look at the transponder. You'll see it there on V pilot and on all the jazz, right? Now, then we started talking about uncontrolled airports because now, now we're saying to ourselves, how does this all work? Like, if I'm on the ground in Waterford and I can see that Dublin approach is on, but like, do I need to talk to him yet? Like, how does this all work? Who do I talk to? Do I tune my radio into Waterford Tower or do I stay on Unicom? You stay on Unicom. If you're in an uncontrolled environment and there is no ATC available and VATSIM operate on a top-down system, therefore, if there's no one else online but approach, well, approach becomes your tower, your ground control, all these things from the top down, right? If there was only tower in Dublin, well, he's the tower and the ground. You know what I mean? It's a top down system, right? If you had, for example, uh, the Shannon FIR or FIS up and running, right? Um, well, then we could talk to them. But again, we don't need to talk to them until we get into their airspace because they'll only take over, usually at around 4,000, 5,000 feet. Again, your charts will tell you that. Your charts will tell you that, right? It's always going to be easier departing and arriving at airports that have, uh, you know, controllers. But it's not always going to be possible. In actual fact, in the real world, it is highly probable, especially with VFR, you're going to be landing at uncontrolled airports. Burr, for example, is uncontrolled. No tower, right? Kuna, I think, is the same. There's a number of airports around that don't have ATC. Now, they might have a flight information officer. That's something very different. And that's more, more of a thing in England, right? And they kind of look after ground traffic and so on. Uh, and we'll learn about that at some stage as well, because that's pretty cool. Like, that goes back to the Second World War, you know. Hello, Roger. Roger, Roger. It, it does all that, right? Anyway, um, uncontrolled airports. There's a couple of things we need to avoid. This, when I say avoid, try to avoid this. And it's about kind of having too much chatter when you're on the frequency, because, well, other people are trying to fly. They're trying to navigate, and they're listening out for things that may or may not be important for them. So misunderstandings. When it comes to flying at uncontrolled airports, this is because most folks, when flying online, just do what they think is correct when no ATC is actually online. It's a logical consequence. When nobody really talks about what to do and what not to do when ATC is not online. Okay. When you're flying both IF4 or VF4, it's impo important to keep in mind why you are talking on the frequency in the first place when there is no ATC. The reason? to let all pilots in that area know where you are, what you're doing, and what you're planning to do next. It goes without saying, right? Always make sure you tell the controller you are with them. Ah, oh, never, never, ever say that. Never say with you. What do you mean with you? And also with you, huh? There's a couple of things people, like bad habits get in there all the time, right? They just do. Like I'm not gonna get, I won't get cross or whatever when I hear them, but like, you don't need to invent words to put them in. You don't say with you. With you is not terminology inside ATC. It's not in the VFR phraseology. It's not in IFR phraseology on the US side or in Europe. It doesn't exist. But people say it. Okay, I'm with you. Thanks very much. Jays, it means a lot to me. Do you like Garth Brooks? It's nonsense. You don't need to know it. However, what you do need to know is to keep everything clear, concise, simple. And fairly quick. You're not going to jump on and tell them your life story. Echo India Tango Tango Mike is an old Cessna 172. Hey, we've taken off from Burr. And when we went flying out of Burr, sure didn't we head out? Out over the nice area. And from the nice area, we went flying to Portumna. And we saw a couple of ducks as they were flying. They were very fast. And I saw these ducks... And I thought to myself, don't hit them. Then we flew. And uh, I had to scratch my left eyebrow. 
poor time in the traffic. Right? Don't tell them your life story. Keep the whole thing clear and concise. You say, right, who are you? What are you? What do you want? Who are, sorry, who are you? What are you? Where are you? And what do you want? Very, very basic things. And don't worry how you're going to say them, right? I heard Cian Lefford, Titus Pullo, the actor who played Titus Pullo. I saw that earlier on. That's so sad. That is so sad. A grand way of getting ignored uh, or get an unable. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, VFR communication for uncontrolled airports, and we go into it here. But what do we say if we're at an uncontrolled airport? What do we like? How do we speak? What do we say? And who's listening? Right? Um, it, it's 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 interesting stuff because, well, this way, it's a little bit exaggerated, but if you follow it, you're doing it right. Now you can kind of chop things out of here. Shannon Ground, Echo India, Tango Tango Mike, Cessna One Seventy Two. You don't need to go into that much detail. Shannon Ground. You got a Cessna 172 taking off or, or taxing via the apron uh, and Alpha to runway six. Now, I'm a Cessna. Now, if you have 20 Cessnas, now, okay, makes sense. Put in, um, you put in the call sign. Know what I mean? Anyway, what do we say when we're en route? What do we say when we're arriving? And remember, this is all uncontrolled, uncontrolled airports. Yeah. Uh, and then we, uh, we do our landing and then we're finished. The third lesson is now time to plan and file and fly a VFR flight. For this lesson, we're departing from Shannon and our arrival will be Connemara. There will be no ATC coverage for this flight. All communication will be on Unicom. So lesson number three is the one I highly recommend you start with and follow it from start to finish. Page number 67, lads. Just start that. If you follow that, you're laughing. Absolutely laughing. All right. And it goes through the charts what to do and how to do it. The next one, the next one is joining an, aer an aerodrome circuit. So that's how to join the circuit. And then we immediately jump into another lesson. I'll scroll down. Go around, missed approaches. They're important. So have a read of them. Lesson four. Our second VFR flight, our plan is to depart a controlled airport and fly to and land at an uncontrolled airport. Okay. So now we're going to be departing a controlled airport and then we venture over to Unicom after we depart lesson four okay and again we go through the entire system start to finish step by step by step what do you say what do you do when do you do it when do you say it it's all there everything is there right and we'll be going over this uh, practically probably next week lads just to practice it right just to practice it then uh, we talked about the flight information services. Well, what do we mean by that? Well, in some countries, there's an information service available and they'll give us information based on maybe the weather, uh, what, what's happening in the airspace. Is there gliders flying? Is there busy traffic? Are there no tams? Think of it as like a live information service for your flight. You're not necessarily getting controlled. They're just telling you what's going on. And there's a couple of different services we can request. A basic service... Well, no service, that goes without saying. A basic service, right? Or a traffic service. Now, a traffic service is similar to a uh, radar service, right? They're going to keep you clear of other aircraft. They're going to keep you away from harm's way, right? So there is a little bit of controlling in there, okay? Uh, my Bose headset is so cool. I can hear everything in the background. At Mercer. Yeah, Mr. Tudon's in the kitchen there. That's right, lads. I have a kitchen. Who was asking? Yeah, that's right. She's in the kitchen, right? Um. Anyway. Heading, track, bearing, and course. This is good fun last week, but if you're like me, I always struggled um, with which, what are these? What are these different things that we're doing? What do they mean by a heading or a track or a bearing? I've lost my bearings, right? This explains it. Have a read down through it. It eliminates the head scratching, yeah? And then the last bit was Q codes. What do we mean by Q codes? Basically, they're identifier codes used to signal something. QTE, what is my true bearing from you, right? QTF. Position with relation to a point of reference of latitude and longitude. All right. QNH. Ooh. What's the uh, barometric pressure? Yeah. The small kitchen where she bumps into everything. That's a friggin' massive kitchen. I'm going to extend it out into the garden. I did, it's going to be a topless kitchen. Oh, behave. Right. Uh, now, our last lesson that we did, or I think our second last, uh, and sorry for the crackly voice, lads. But I'm going to have to call it a night here in a minute because I, I, I have to work tomorrow and I have to give, like, I have to talk for extended periods of time tomorrow, right? But anyway, don't worry. We're not rushing this thing, so don't worry if this isn't making a whole lot of sense to you. Our focus on this is to be ready for this event. We're not doing the event until everyone is ready. And once we have it done, it's done. 
we move on, we do other things, and then we'll circle back to it in a couple of weeks or months. Fair enough. So VFR lesson five. For our third VFR flight, our plan is to depart an uncontrolled airport, fly to and land at a controlled airport. This is the exact flight we're going to be doing on our VATSIM event. Departing uncontrolled, and we're going to arrive at Shannon, where we're going to do a fly-in. And again, plan your flight, file your flight, fly the flight, every single step during the flight of what to do, where you're talking, and so on. The arrival, once you get landed, and then you review your flight. It's always important to review your flight, because it's only then you'll realise that, well, hang on. The wind blew me way off course. I didn't get the wind heading correct, or I didn't aim off enough for the wind. Or, um, ATC got me to do something I wasn't expecting. They asked me to um, extend my downwind, or they wouldn't give me permission to enter the Sligo control area, or so on. You know what I mean? It's, it's, you, you got to review your flight, and that's where you learn from. It's no different than in the real world. That's where you learn from. The seven Ps are very important. They are. Prior planning and preparation prevents piss poor performance. It is a fact. It is a fact, right? So, as I said, this book is available. There's also other stuff. I'm going to make this available again. We did an, a VFR, IFR lesson class thing uh, last year, right? But there's some handy information here because we talk about, well, what is the difference between IFR and VFR? We talked about the traffic circuit and what to do and how to do it, yeah? We talked about uh, some VFR flying steps to a perfect crosswind landing. But because when we know we're going to be taken off and landing with the wind, how do we do it? So I have a ton of this stuff I'll make available for you guys once again. This is part of our VFR course that we did. Do you remember that one we did using FS Academy, right? When entering areas, you need permission to enter. Does the area show up in the same aircraft map? Not all the time. Iceman, sometimes it might, right? But a lot of the time it won't. So if we were to open the map here, right, look. And let's have a look. So depending on the information we're going to get from Navio Blue, you can see that there is airspace here, right? There's no way to identify what it is, though. You know what I'm saying? All we know is, hey, there's something going on here. Like, the VFR maps in the same way, absolutely, they're, they're, they're crap. Like, they're, they're really crap, right? Uh, they're better than nothing, but they're crap. Um... So you will see some areas of control, like Shannon, you know, it doesn't load in nice. It's, it's, you just know you're entering certain zones. It's very hard to, it's very hard to do it. For the Xbox pilots, this is where the visual reference points is so important. Yeah. So we were talking about visual reference points. What have I just clicked into? Um, we were talking about visual reference points and that's why this is important. If you were to have a look at um, Waterford, right? Uh, where are you now? Here you go. Oh, here you go. Here's Waterford, and there's the airspace around uh, Waterford, right? Hello. And here's here's the airport, right? Uh, who be this? Uh, who be this? Uh, Lil MSA BMW prototype. Thank you for the follow. Welcome in, welcome in. My voice is nearly gone, lads. Um, anyway, look, see the way it has VRP Tremor race course. Okay, VRP Metal Man. Ooh, VRP. Brownstown Head, VRP Creedon Head. See the way you have all these visual reference points, yeah? VRP Bag and Bone Head. What do they mean by Bag and Bone Head? Well, they're visual reference points. They're like the head, it's like a big sand dune, bit of a mountain over the beach, right? There's also stuff here. You have the VRP for JFK Park. You have a VRP for the Rose Fitzgerald Kennedy Bridge, which is an actual POI in Microsoft Flight Sim, right? That's down there. Then you'll see where New Ross is. You'll see then that there's, you know, one Nevat where the wind farms are. There's VRP down at Fidown. You're now getting over to where they make all the lovely cider, heading up towards Carrick and Shore, right? Um, and then you'll also see um, a hospital. There's a hospital there in Waterford. And that's pretty much where Epic Field tends to live. He'd be flying in and around there the whole time, right? But you can see on this information or on this chart, yeah, this is all taken and it's showing you the VRPs. So if you can kind of visualize and find the VRPs and say, right, okay, well, I tell you what, if we take off from Waterford and we're flying to the north, east, well, let's pick out the Kennedy Bridge, the Rose Fitzgerald Kennedy Bridge. Well, let's have a look, right? Let's have a look. Can I find it is the question, right? So if we're going to be departing uh, <clears throat> runway zero, uh, what was it, six, right? Uh, sorry, runway zero three. And we want to find now the Rose Fitzgerald Kennedy Bridge. So if we were flying 
flying along, flying along, we're flying on the runway heading. And because we're VFR, we're just looking out the window. Now, I can start to see things already, look. I can see Waterford City in the distance. I can see Bellevue. Look, there's Waterford City over here. Okay, sweet. There's Waterford City. Nice. Okay. Well, if I stay going on this road, I should, should come across a bridge. Let's keep flying until we see it, right? Now, let's see. So, we're looking for the big bridge. We're looking for the Rose Fitzgerald Kennedy Bridge. I hope I didn't miss it. Oh, I think it's up here. We can double-check our map now here in a second. But as far as I know, it's up here. You think you'd know, Murphy? I do. I think it's up this way. Wait, where's the bridge? Hang on, we'll speed her up there now. It might just appear and scare the life out of us. It's up here, I think. Uh, okay, where's the bridge? Have I done something wrong? Where's the bridge gone? Are we gone the wrong way? Shouldn't be. Hmm. Uh, can we shock that lurgy out of you? <laughs> Where's the feckin' bridge? Stupid thing. Bellevue. I wonder do I have the landmarks turned off? Oh, lads, I could have the POIs turned off. Good man, Murphy. Dreamy, sleepy, Jeez. nighty, snoozy snooze. Man, ailerons, that didn't scare me at all. Um, right. <laughs> I probably have the, uh, the, the things turned off. Don't worry about that. But on your sim, you should see the Rose Fitzgerald Kennedy Bridge. And we'll use that, right? Someone nicked the bridge, right? What's funny is... Uh, it's the biggest bridge in Ireland. It is. To most of the world, it's long going over a street, right? I just can't find the bridge, but I think I have... This is how I save uh, crashes at uh, Dublin Lads. I turn off some of the POIs because they are problematic. But you have Waterford, you have Bellevue. There are a couple of other VRPs we can use here, the hospital included, yeah? But on your sim, you will see the Rose Fitzgerald Kennedy Bridge. You cannot miss it. It's massive. Terrage. Absolutely huge. All right? So, we get the idea. So, lads, I'm going to call it there. We've we've covered a fair bit of ground, uh, and I'll 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 end it an hour early, uh, only because well it, the voice is gone right. Uh, but thank you very very much indeed. Next week we're going to do a bit of flying right, and it'd be interesting if we can get uh, some ATC active in Shannon for next week, and let's do <clears throat> let's plan two flights next week. We'll have one coming from Waterford, and maybe one coming from Donegal. Is that fair enough? And let's see what that's going to entail. And we'll see what sort of ATC um, coverage, even if it's on Discord, because that means our Xbox pilots can fly with us. So we'll do our flight plan. We won't take half as much time. We'll just do our flight plan and say, we want to go these directions. And we're literally going to grab a bit of paper and we're going to write down the waypoints, the visual reference points. You know, we're going to cross a bridge that, that is still there that wasn't taken. Right? Uh, we're going to fly over a massive factory or a forest, or a lake, or whatever, right? We'll write these down, and they'll become our visual reference points when we want to go flying next week, all right? Again, apologies for the voice. Thank you very, very much indeed for tuning in, and uh, if we catch you tomorrow or something, I'd be on Discord, show up in, uh, and stand by for the raid too.